like I said, opening up a school and teaching jujitsu was not in the cards for me. I never, never thought about having a jujitsu school, much less a chain of jujitsu schools. That was not a thought in my head. It was all about the entertainment business. And um, when I quit the band show and opened up my school, first of all, I decided to go all no gi. Because at that point, I was, I was, it was, it was all, for me, I didn't, I wasn't interested in training in the gi. It, for me, the most important thing was how, how my jujitsu was gonna do when someone's trying to punch me. So I didn't think there would be a big resistance, you know, backlash for me opening up a school no gi. I was like, okay, we're, do, you know, I thought more people would jump on. Like, let's, all of us do this. You know, don't let, don't let me do this by myself. You know, the most important thing is how jujitsu looks in, in the main card of the UFC. The whole world is watching the main card of the UFC. It's not important how jujitsu looks in a gym or in the Mundials. Black belt legends don't even know who's winning the Mundials. Jiu-Jitsu fanatics don't even know who's winning the Mundials. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people who love jujitsu, the black belts. They're not following it. It doesn't matter how it looks there. What it matters is where everyone's watching. Everybody's watching the UFC. That's where, that's where jujitsu is supposed to look good. I respect jujitsu. I respect the Gracies. I respect where it came from. I, that's part of my lineage. That's, that's my tree trunk is what the Brazilians did. What I'm trying to do is just make it uh, shine in the UFC. Shine on the main card. That's the, my number one goal. So, but they didn't, you know, the jiu-jitsu community, uh, a, a large percentage of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu community didn't look at it that way. Porra de bravo, you train with gi. You got your black belt with the gi. You train no gi? Mm, that's disrespect. Ours. I, I didn't know what to say. I, what are you talking about? It's just, it's a Japanese outfit. It's not even Brazilian. Why are you so attached to it? So I thought, wow, this is like a religious clothing. Oh my God, this is, I, I, I thought that was a, I'll never, I know who it is. I'm not going to say his name. I remember the tournament. He came up to me. I was shocked. I really was caught up by surprise. Joe Rogan is one of my students. I taught Joe Rogan a lot when it comes to jujitsu. He's the commentator of the UFC. It's not a coincidence that he's always referred to the groundwork as jujitsu. That was strategic. It's about jujitsu. We're doing this for jujitsu. If Josh Barnett would have taken over the commentary, commentary role back when Joe Rogan did, he wouldn't be saying jujitsu when there was any ground action. He'd be calling that catch wrestling or submission wrestling. There wouldn't be any jujitsu schools around. There'd be submission grappling schools all around. Submission wrestling schools would be everywhere. You know the power of branding on the UFC? Joe Rogan has been saying jujitsu and ramming it down people's throats where any anytime you see something on the ground, that's jujitsu. So the jujitsu community should be owes a lot to Joe Rogan. If you're making money on jujitsu somewhere in this world, Joe Rogan has a lot to do with that. Trust me. 85% of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community, including MMA fighters, think that training in the gi is how you prepare for MMA. Like, you want to do MMA? Let me put a gi on you. This is going to make you good in MMA. They believe that. 85% of the, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community believes that. It's incredible. And I'll, all I'm saying is that's not true. Like, that's ridiculous. How is that true? If you want to do MMA, you don't need the gi. The gi is actually going to slow you down. It's not going to help. You, of course, if you train in the gi for 10 years and you go do MMA, you're going to see the guy's good at jiu-jitsu. You're going to see that. Because everything, everything, uh, uh, all the movements are the same, gi and no gi. Movements are the same, 80%. Your feet are doing the same thing. Your knees are doing the same thing. Your hips are doing the same thing. Your shoulders are doing the same thing. And generally, most of your arms are doing the same thing, but your hands are not doing the same thing. That's the difference. Your hands are not doing the same thing with the gi. So that's, there's a, uh, everyone's still got their head in a fog, like, oh, but look, look, there's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He trained in the gi his whole life. Now he's doing MMA. Look, his jiu-jitsu looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good, but there's, 
his guard does, doesn't look that great. There isn't, there isn't anybody out of all these black belt world champions that you're saying, oh my God, look at how amazing his guard is. You're not seeing that. On top, in a lot, of, a lot of the positions where the hand grips aren't important, yeah, it looks beautiful. The passing, beautiful hip movement, you know, getting the back and, and just the transitions, yes. So it appears that, yeah, he trained in the gi, look how he does in MMA, yes. But if he didn't have a gi and he trained jiu-jitsu the whole time without the gi, he'd be way better. If my philosophies prove to be true, these black belts that have schools, then that makes their black belt not so complete. Now they gotta learn this new stuff. It would be a lot easier if my style just proved to be a fraud, and then they could just keep their complete black belt going. That's really what it comes down to. You know? You know, and when you, when you grow up your whole life training in the gi, then training in the gi 15, 20 years, that's how you dominate your students. Oh, it's really easy to dominate them with that gi. You've been, you've been training in the gi your whole life. And the more you dominate your students, the healthier your school is. You know, as soon as your students start wrecking you, a school will die if the instructor gets tapped by every one of his students. But a school will thrive if none of the students ever tap this, this instructor. That school's strong. So you know that. You got a family, you got kids. You want to dominate them with a gi. You don't want to have everyone take off their gi and then it mixes up the ranking a little bit. Now you got these wrestlers coming in. They've been wrestling without handles their whole life. And now you're the instructor, you got to wrestle with. The, it's better if you put that gi back on so I could grab that collar and strangle you. I mean, it's no, no, you know, people always say, oh, like Mark Coleman, yeah, he could beat this jujitsu guy in MMA, but with the gi, shit, Mark Coleman would tap out, you know, 10 times in 10 minutes with the gi. Yeah, of course, that is true. Because now that's your weapon, that jacket, you need that weapon. You know, so it really comes down to, to uh, keeping your school healthy, keeping it strong. Why bring in this new stuff? It's better for everybody, for everybody in the jiu-jitsu community, if it's true that training in the gi really does, is very important for MMA, because MMA is getting so big, the UFC is getting so big, that's good for the, the, the gi business. If that's true, if, some, if somehow yanking and pulling on a, on a collar is gonna help you block punches and set up submissions and sweeps with a clench, that's somehow gonna make it better, then that's good for the jiu-jitsu community, you know? When I started, the reason I started putting the anacondas on on the back was when Jean-Jacques went to Abu Dhabi his first year, every time he got someone's back, he put the anaconda on. And I was like, you don't, you don't really do that in class. I'm going to do that in class. He goes, no gi, everybody's slippery, so I had to put that in to control their hips. And everything Jean-Jacques told me has been 100% true, so I don't even question it. I go, okay, so every time I get the bat, I'm gonna try to put that anaconda in as well. He did it. He just felt like he had to in Abu Dhabi because everybody was really slippery. With the gi, not as necessary. Because with both hands, you can grab the collar. It's very hard for them to spin back into your guard with the gi. No gi happens all the time. Dude's on a guy's back, slippery, they slip, now he's in the guard. Very common. There's a lot of problems with the judging, and, and a lot of it stems from MMA was a threat to boxing. MMA was the enemy to boxing. And boxing is a bunch of people with jobs that have to pay their house payments and support their family. So those people naturally, when it comes to you getting backed in the corner and it's your family, you, that's the enemy. I don't, I'm not rooting for that fucking MMA. But once they, they finally succumbed and people started jumping ship, and now they're jumping ship, and now there's an MMA, MMA commissions, they still come from the boxing side. Still secretly they want the boxing, the striker. They're pulling for the striker. So when all the rules uh, were made, it's really boxing people that changed over to MMA, but they still would rather have they still would rather have a boxer win in MMA fights. Oh, they would love seeing the striker coming in and mess up the grapplers. They're not, they're not pulling for grapplers. So all these rules, uh, you know, and they, they become judges. 
That's why we're not looking at like guard passing and taking the back and, and near submissions. Uh, they're not looking at, at that uh, as much as like the striking and like the wrestling for the most part. So you have that with the judging and then you have that with the rules. You know, when they like banned like any kind of, uh, they ban geese, like you can't wear geese because you know, they, they use that as a weapon to choke out their opponents are dangerous. Meanwhile, no one's wearing a gi except Hoist Gracie. It's not that dangerous. It's actually more of a disadvantage because people could grab you. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. If in, in Japan, look at Japan, if it was really an advantage, more people would be wearing gi. You know what I mean? So you gotta look at, you know, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to everything and what outweighs what. It all depends on you. So they outlawed geese because they were too dangerous. They implemented rounds, five minute rounds. Um, they have no uh, uh, regulations or, or, or testing for greasing and everybody's greasing. So everything's geared for, like a lot, lot, a lot of the rules are geared for strikers. Like they put Vaseline all over faces. That's all boxing stuff. They're putting Vaseline all over the face. You don't think that gets all over the body? These guys are fighting all vaseline up. It just doesn't stay on the face. They punch, it gets on the hands, they're touching each other, they're grabbing their, you know? So it's, and you can't wear tights to, uh, to counteract that. And no, tights are too dangerous. I'm the only one that said tights can help your bottom game. And then they take that as, oh, it's dangerous. It's like, you gotta have something to combat all this grease and this oil, you know? But meanwhile, um, they ban pants, they ban tights because it's an advantage. It's an adva Meanwhile, nobody in Japan was wearing pants and tights except for Aoki. If it was such an advantage and, and it was, uh, it, it, they would be wearing them. Would the Brazilians ain't wearing geese. Minotauro ain't wearing no geese, not wearing gi pants. Because yes, it will combat the grease and it will give you hope and it will give you some traction off your back to do something about all that Vaseline. But overall, the way they look at it, most Brazilians don't wear gi pants because they go, you know what? It's gonna make it easier for me to get caught in a leg lock. Or, you know, I don't wanna have that. Forget about the guard work, I don't care about that. Let's make it hard to get leg lock. Cause that's the main thing when the Brazilians came in, they knew the only way that these Japanese guys and these American wrestlers can get them is with leg locks. Cause at that time, leg locks weren't popular amongst Brazilians. So they're like, you know, we're gonna come in a little Valetudo shorts, you ain't gonna get my legs. This is your only hope. And you ain't gonna get these things, they're all greasy. You know, so no one's wearing pants. And Cause, you know, so really it's a disadvantage to wear pants if you look at it that way. So my point is you have all these guys from the boxing commission they hated grappling. Grappling was the enemy. MMA was the enemy. Now they're working for MMA, but still everything is, is all in favor for the striker. You know? And meanwhile, what separates, what separates MMA from all these other striking sports like boxing and kickboxing and karate tournaments and all that is the grappling. That's what makes it different. The submissions, the jiu-jitsu. That's, that's why the sport is on a meteoric rise because of the grappling. We've already had kickboxing. No one's watching kickboxing. We had K1 in the United States. They gave that a big push. No one's watching even boxing. Boxing's super popular and that's falling in the toilet. We already have that. We already had kickboxing. We already had striking. You think that's more exciting? How come it's falling apart? What's exciting is the addition of the grappling and the submissions and the chokes and the arm bars. That freaks people out. We should, do, we should be doing more to promote that end of the sport. Rear naked choke is not working. There's a minute to go. A lot of time, I don't know how many fights I've seen where a guy's on someone's back, the round ends, and then they start up the next round and they get knocked out. So many times, it's happened to my fighters. Um, from here, can get the rear naked choke. I can go to the swim over to go to spider web, or I could switch to the truck here and start attacking. Calf crank. Um, crotch ripper here, banana split here, twister here. And of all the spells, we could always go right back to the back and start working that again. I mean, how do I feel about my students training at other schools? I, I, I look at it a little differently with my students, the way I want to run my association. But for the most part, 
It is uh, looked down upon when students go to different schools, you know. Um, it is, because you feel like a team and a family and like, you can't get everything from me. You gotta go over there. My jujitsu ain't enough. You gotta go train over there. What about my jujitsu? You think you're, they're better? A lot of egos get involved and I understand that it's, you know, caveman DNA. You know, it's just, you know, when someone talks to my girlfriend, I get really jealous and I wanna beat their ass. I don't try to flirt with my girlfriend, motherfucker. I'm right here. You know, that's caveman DNA. I understand stuff like that. It's a human condition. But for me, I look at it different. For me, my goal is to compile the best possible no-gi, MMA-ready jiu-jitsu. So, and I know what it takes. And I don't have what it takes. I don't have the time to do it all by myself. I mean, if, you, if, if that's the goal, how much time is it gonna take? I don't have that much time. So I use my students as you know, scouts and agents and scientists. I send them to other schools to bring back stuff. And then we bring it back and we try it. And you know, we wanna make sure we can get all the best stuff at 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu. So I, I do things a little bit different. I'm, I'm looking at it like, uh, like the owner of a NFL football team. You know, the owner of an NFL football team, he, uh, it wouldn't be good business if he just kept all his knowledge. It has to be like in-house, it has to be family and a tribe and a clan. Like, that's not good business for him. Good business for him is like going out and finding out what everyone else is doing and bringing and hiring this guy to bring in this guy. You know what I mean? You know, the, he wants to take his team to the Super Bowl. You know, you can't have any like, uh, like, traditional culture barriers or clan, you know, uh, clan-like activities. You gotta like say, forget about that, who's the best? Let's go get the best, let's go get the best, let's go get the best. Who's doing that? Let's go get the best. So that's the way I look at it. But, you know, when, if someone else, so my guys are constantly training at other people's gyms, so I, I can't get like jealous. If I did, I would go insane because they do it all the time. <laughs> the rule is you just got to bring me back some toys. Bring me back the good stuff. There you go. There you go. There you go. Overhook, underhook. Bam, axing down. There you go. Perfect. Nice. Beautiful. Go the high Zach. Zach. Shoot those legs up. You're flat or get back. You never get flat. There you go. Triangle the. Your question about me competing, me not competing, this is what went down. Uh, I never was a professional athlete, never planned on competing and dominating the world. I don't care about winning a gold medal at the Mundials or Abu Dhabi. I was just doing that for fun. So, and to see, just to see how far I would get. It was all a hobby that went out of control. I'm like, like how did this happen? So, in, uh, that was 2003, and in 2004, um, Pahum Pina from American Top Team, he challenged me to a match and I said, okay, let's take it. So I trained for that. It was going to be in Florida. They were going to fly me out. He called me out and I go, okay, you know, I'm going to have to get in shape again. You know, I don't like training. I just like doing jujitsu. But now my reputation was on the line. Now I, I had to take my training seriously. I had to put everything on hold to train for that match. I mean, he's calling me out in Florida. They were going to fly me out. They had this tournament set up. And so I'm training like a madman again. Hate it on a diet, but I'm like, you know what? I got to prove myself here. And now there's a lot of pressure. I got a school. Damn, now it's pressure. Before I went to Abu Dhabi, there was no pressure. Now there's pressure. Well, Katrina hit. They had to cancel the event. I wanted to, I was, I'm like, I don't know when I can, I'm going to get in shape again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's just do this. I said, just, I offered him to, I offered him to fly to my school, we'll videotape it right there. I'm in shape, I'm ready to do this, and we'll stream it on the internet. That's when streaming was just coming later. They ha didn't have it down, but I just wanted to do it, put it on video, I don't care. I, want, I don't want this, this training to go for naught, you know? So he, his, his uh, family got affected by the hurricane, so he couldn't leave, he couldn't do it. So then I said, fuck it. So then I started training for Abu Dhabi 2005. I go, okay, this is gonna be it. I'm gonna train for Abu Dhabi. So I start training again, because a lot of people are saying, hey, when are you gonna compete again? I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna compete, I'm gonna compete. So um, I wanted, um, 
I was trying to get uh, me and Hoyler first round. I was convinced because I knew the promoter. I go, put us in the first round. That way, at least for sure, you'll get the rematch and you guys will own the rematch. But I, that's what I want. I just wanted the rematch just to prove that I wasn't lucky and I was done. For me, I was like, I'm going to prove that I wasn't lucky and then I'm done. I got to focus. I'm 35 now, man. You know, the, I've done enough jujitsu. I got to go back to the music. You know, if I keep training like an Olympian, I'm not, I'm not, you know, that affects my whole life. You know, you can't do seminars, you can't go on the road, and you can't open up new schools. You got, a, you got a reputation to uphold. Now all of a sudden, now I'm a professional fucking athlete. I'm like, oh shit. Here we go, how did the fuck, the, like, I'm not, I already beat Hoyler, I'm good, I was done. I go, now I could use that to open up a bunch of schools and usher my music through. So, um, I trained for Abu Dhabi 2005, and all this stuff's on the internet. Oh, he hasn't competed in two years and all this shit. And I'm like, now I'm getting drawn into it now. So then I, I get hurt like three weeks before I pop the same rib, uh, the Leo Vieira rib. And, um, and it's on video, videotape that you could hear my rib pop. I mean, no one, I mean, the people I was training with, there was, it was not faked or anything like that. That was real. Cause so there was some people going, oh, he, he ducked. No, it wasn't fake. My fucking rib went out again in training on video. It popped. And, um, I was in Jew Claw. And this is when I first started, instead of just controlling the wrist here and reach, I would reach over with this arm. And still have my legs like that, and that did something to my rib. So I couldn't do that match. Hoyler, uh, he ended up bowing out of that tournament too. So I'm like, oh, doesn't really matter anyways. I wanted all I wanted was a rematch with him. I thought it'd be perfect. You know, there was a bunch of other guys that are better than him, like again Leo Vieira and all those guys, really good. But that's not going to do anything for the, my mission was. Let's blow this up as much as possible. If I spent all my time trying to prove myself and competing against all these guys that are, that are like real athletes and they're training all day, I don't want to train all day. I go, I've done enough. Now, the, and then after that, after Abu Dhabi, I was like, you know what? I trained really, really hard for the, the Pahupina match and for Abu Dhabi, I'm done. Unless Hoyler wants a rematch, you know what? There's no way I'm gonna be able, to, I'm gonna spend another couple months training. I'm like, the plan was, let's open up as many schools as possible. Let's make sure we don't ever have to go back to regular life again, working a regular job. Let's build that and let's focus on the music. You're 35 now, what are you doing? What are you gonna keep competing and then you're gonna, you're gonna push your, the music when you're 40? Let's open up a bunch of schools. The more schools you have, the more fans of your music you have, the more places you have to play, that's the plan. Don't listen to what anybody's saying. Oh, you don't compete, you don't compete. Like, who cares? I'm not trying to be a champion anyways. What I do have is I do have a system that I put together and I'm still, it's still evolving and I don't need to compete to keep putting together the system. It's the best system for MMA. I already have that. So I'm opening up as many schools as possible. I, I, I'm going to continue to evolve that MMA style for my MMA fighters and just continue to build the 10th planet empire and you know if Hoyler wants to do a rematch we could do that we were supposed to do it in in um, the Middle East last month but he didn't want to do it they had promoters looking into it I'll do that in a second anytime he's ready to go I hate talking about it because people think oh he's always calling him out I'm not calling him out all I'm saying is when you ask me about why I'm not competing I will compete We'll do that whole rematch, make it nice and big. If he beats me, then we'll do a trilogy. That's the way I want to go out. I really don't care about winning any grappling titles. I'm done with that. The music is my main focus. Jiu-Jitsu is what's propelling it. So that's why, you know, I'm doing whatever I can in the Jiu-Jitsu world, you know, with this interview, opening up schools, teaching seminars, teaching MMA fighters, teaching George, showing that I have come up with this MMA system of jiu-jitsu that's better than the traditional way. And it's in the long run, everyone's going to benef benefit from it. Everybody in jiu-jitsu is going to benefit from it. So everybody should be helping me, you know, not trying to keep me down. But I'm having a lot of fun with all the resistance. It's fun. It's actually uh, become very interesting to, like, all of a sudden, I'm this anti-jiu-jitsu rebel that these you know, that the jiu-jitsu community is rooting against. You know, I, I, it shouldn't be that way, 
and I would rather have it just be a pure positive thing, but it, it's, it's interesting, it's cool. They created a, a, a rebel, and I'm happy to play the role, whatever, but the bottom line, it's all for jujitsu.